Hey guys, welcome back to another video. What we're going to be talking about today is how to problem solve as a software engineer. Now, problem solving is, you know, that's what the job is. Your job as a software engineer isn't really to code, but it's to solve difficult problems. And oftentimes, you know, whether you're just starting or whether you're very experienced, there's going to be certain problems that are a lot harder to solve. You know, maybe you spent a couple of days and you're like, you want to give up because you can't solve them and you're, you're so stressed or not, or not even stressed, just annoyed that, you know, you've done so much, but you're not, you're not anywhere closer to solving the problem. Well, the good news is there's certain things you can do so that any problem you face, you're ready to solve it. And there's certain steps you can just follow to make it a lot easier to face certain problems. So if you're new to the channel, what we do here is we talk about how to become a software engineer and kind of change career paths, whether, you, whether you're just starting out as a software engineer or you have another job and you want to become one. And I try to do my best to give you guys tips I, I've been working as a software engineer for almost five years now. And yeah, I do my best to help you guys out. If you like the content, feel free to like and subscribe. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much. I'm super grateful for you. Now, what I want to start off with is saying that, you know, no two people are going to be thinking the same way. Everyone thinks differently. And some of these things might not work for you, but I think most of it should apply to everyone. But if you have different ways of thinking, don't be discouraged by some of these ideas. So the first thing I want you to do if you have a very difficult problem is you want to identify the nature of the problem. You know, you want to get to the root of it and see where the problem really lies. Is it a bug in the software? Is there like some code that's not working properly? Or, you know, it could be a problem with the user experience and the problem you're trying to solve isn't really a bug, but it's just how do, how do we make the user experience perfect for someone? So you really want to get to the root of the nature of the problem before you want to solve it. And then you really want to get into why that's an issue and what you're going to gain by solving the problem. So if there's a bug, something's not working right, you know, the issue is that the product isn't complete and then, you know, your, your company can't be making any money or something. And then there's different problems like what I was mentioning with user experience. The issue is that, you know, people aren't converting as much and, you know, stuff like that. So you really want to identify why you have to solve the problem before you actually solve it. Sometimes there's certain problems that aren't worth really solving, right? And then once you know what the root of the problem is, this is where you want to start breaking it down, breaking it down into smaller problems and that's where you could, you know, start solving the problem, right? One of the biggest things is, you know, you're faced with this huge problem, but you don't know where to begin. Now, if you get to the root of it, you break it down into smaller problems, then you'll kind of have like a step-by-step -step process of things you have to solve and small things you can tackle instead of this one big problem. The first thing you want to do is you want to research what other people have done, right? The classic go on Stack Overflow, copy, paste the code, put it in yours and run it and hope to God. Uh, not really. I mean, sometimes, but not really. Uh, you want to really research what other people have done because odds are other people have, um, have already experienced this problem and probably have a solution that, you know, you should read through, make sure you understand it before putting it into your code and then kind of changing it around to apply to your situation. But yeah, as I was saying, other people have probably faced a similar problem and there's definitely a lot of forums online, you know, like Stack Overflow that you can read to see, you know, what other people have done and what kind of problems they were facing when trying to solve the problem as well. It really gives you an idea of different solutions. Now, one thing you're going to realize is that as you're trying to solve a problem, you're going to realize there's multiple solutions to anything, right? There's hundreds of different ways to solve any problem. And so what you're going to want to do is really do your research, really get into what the benefits of, of different solutions that you find before picking one. This is where this is a very crucial, important and important part of solving a problem because one solution might not be as good as another. So this is really, um, I would say doing the research about the problem is like 90% of the work and actually writing the code is 10% of the work. Because if you can do enough research, if you can... Uh, uh, you know, look at different ideas and kind of get the pros and cons of, of each different solution when implementing the code is going to be super easy because you're going to know what to do and you're going to know what not to do, what to avoid. And next, what I what I usually do after kind of, you know, coming up with a solution is I just open up a, a text editor or, you know, I have a whiteboard here that I write on and I kind of just write some pseudocode and really try to focus on the logic of of the solution instead of the actual implementation of the solution. So here I don't worry about any of the syntax or anything like that. I just kind of really want to write a skeleton. So I know, okay, first I want to do this, put a for loop here, if statement, blah, 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 and really get the logic of the solution down because that really gives me an idea um, that, you know, the problem is solvable. It gives me some more confidence because I'm, I, you kind of feel like you're halfway there. You know, you've, you've written some code here and there and, and you really feel like you're, you've already made very good progress on solving the problem. And it gives you a general idea of how to already implement the code. So when you actually start implementing the code, you know, you're, you've, you've already done some work. So you've, you're, you're just slowly making progress, right? And then the next step, once you have some pseudocode is to start coding, right? So what you want to do here is just to get it to work as quickly as possible. A good quote I like is done is better than perfect. 
So what that means is, you know, you just get it to work. If you can just get your code to run and to work and to actually solve the problem, that's way better than getting it perfect right away, right? The first thing you want to do is just get it running and get it working. This gives you a huge mental win because you know the problem can be solved and you know that you can solve, like, you know that you're able to solve the problem. If you're running it, it's doing what you want to do. It's not fully optimized. Who cares? You know that you can solve the problem. And that's like 90% of the work right there. Once you know you can do that, you're good. You can take some rest. You can, you can think about it and then you can solve it another time. You can optimize it another time. But what I really like to do is just to get it working as soon as possible. That's a huge, huge, huge deal. And if you can't solve it, the best thing you can do is after trying a bit is just to take a break. Right, how I started making this video is I'm actually doing some work right now and I'm experiencing a problem that I wasn't able to solve and it's been taking me a while. So I just, you know, I figured I'd take a break and then I had a good idea to make a video talking about this because this is what every single software engineer will always go through, right? No one goes through, no one becomes a software engineer and doesn't have these kind of moments. If you take a break and you can't solve something, then sometimes, you know, while you're taking a break, you you, you kind of like get this moment of like, oh my God, this is the, this is... This is the solution, right? Because what, what, what happens is that your subconscious mind is constantly solving, it's still so solving the problem even while your conscious mind is doing other things. So in the background, you're, you know, your, your brain is still running and thinking about it. And then at, when you least expect it, you can come up with a solution and then it's unbelievable. This happened to me many times, like at work, at school, all the time. So guys, I just want to leave you off with the thought that problem solving is a skill that you're never going to perfect, but it's definitely something you always have to practice at. You always have to try these different things and, you know, be aware and be be like be present when you're trying to solve these problems and try to do all these different little steps because it will help you get better at problem solving. It will help you identify, you know, the root of the problem, breaking it into smaller problems. All this kind of stuff is going to make you a much better problem solver. And then as a result, you're going to be a much better software engineer. So I hope you guys have enjoyed. Don't forget to enjoy your coding. See ya.